Hey family and friends, welcome back to the second episode of Confessions of an Addicted Coconut Fisherman. In this episode, I will be sharing with you how I make my own coconut lures, right after this message. Boom. Oh my goodness. So as I mentioned to you, I'm already a trout, steelhead, salmon fisherman. I already have a lot of materials to make my own lures. Now there are lots of good coconut fishing lures out there. I'm only gonna need them a few, otherwise this whole entire video will be just about coconut salmon lures and how many different types there are. So locally, I know my friend Mark Hall prefers to use the Mac lures and he, do, he does really well with them. There's a local guy, Rustic Rob. He uses Brad's Cut Plug, the mini Brad's Cut Plug. My good friend Fat Dog loves to use hot ticket lures. Now Warren Fredrickson loves to use his own lures. Like he ties up his own little micro shrimp and the little fly uh, spinners. And like I said, there are lots of other ones out there and they all work. That's part of the fun and the addictive thing about fishing for coconut salmon. For me, I like to experiment. I'm making my own things. Like I said, I already have the materials. So now I'm gonna get into the lures that work for me. And I'm gonna share with you a bunch of experimental ones that I am making right now. All right, let's get to it. Let me finish talking about the first episode where I show you how to make your own rubber snubber. And this is one I found, this is probably a store-bought one. And I realized that in the middle of it, there's a line, fishing line that's tied between this snap swivel and this barrel swivel. So it can go need all maximum of this distance. That's it, there's a string in there. So if this breaks, you can still save your fish. The one that I'm making has no fishing line in between. So it stretches way out, okay, way out, okay? But however, if it breaks, you're gonna lose your fish. So if you want insurance, you can certainly tie a fishing line between these two snap swivel. So we already know that most fishermen have lots of hooks. And I have tons of hooks here, as you can see. Okay, and I also have a bunch of hooks here. So number one, you're gonna need hooks. Some people like to use size four, size six, and I've used size four and size six initially, and I was losing a lot of fish, so I ended up using size two. I have, lot, have lost a lot less fish since then. You know, it's, it's a preference, but I haven't great success with this. Just a regular old must bag, size two. So the fishing line that I will be using is a monofilament. 10 pound test line. I learned this from my brother DK of Tenero Flasher. 10 pound is all you would need. I mean the biggest coconut salmon I caught was only 18 inch. I think 10 pound is plenty. Okay, next up you're gonna need is some beads. And as I mentioned with you, I'm a still head fisherman, so I got plenty of beads that's already in my collection. As you can see, all kinds of beads here, small beads. Here's some small beads. And I've got also big beads. Some big beads here. And some big beads over here. All right. So in terms of beads, I got plenty of beads. I'm not, I didn't have to buy any beads. Okay. For my salmon and still had fishing gear, I have a lot of blades of different size and shape and different colors, as you can see. And this is a number one clevis. Size one clevis, size small clevis, different types of blades, different colors of blade. Willow, French blade, bunch of them I can't even name. For my existing steel head box, I've already got a bunch of these spinning glows. And that's why I first made 
my coconut lures out of these because I already have the existing coconut. I already have the existing steel head spinning gloves. So let's talk about some of the lures I made initially that worked really well. So here I even labeled them now. I retired these guys on December 6th. A bullet's bar, I made these lures. I think I named this one the Green Pirate, the Coconut Green Pirate. And I think I named this one the Green, the Coconut Pink Squid. And of course, these are three versions of what I call JU's Coke Stingers. They're now being made by the Little Flasher. So if you don't want to make your own, you can definitely go there and buy your own Coconut Stingers from the Little Flashers. So these are proven to work. And of course, recently I went back out with some of these other models. I made some more and they all worked. And these are my experimental. This one is one I call the Coke Juju. I'll show you how to make that. It, it, it worked. So let's let's make some of these. The most difficult thing about making these lures is to tie the two hooks together. So let's do that right now. So here's my one of my experiments. I'm switching over to Eagle Claw size 8 cow hook. Why am I using this hook? Number one, it's pretty inexpensive. Number two, it looks pretty decent. I've used it for bass before using life bait. And compared to the mustache, they're about the same size. I'm going to tie these two hooks together. Let's start out with what I believe to be the simplest coconut lure to make, which I call the JU's Coke Stinger. So there's some beads, hooks, spinning glow, 10 pound test line, and you're gonna need a ruler. I'm gonna start out with cutting this line here, maybe 18 inches, roughly. Right there. And I'm gonna tie these two hooks together Real simple. Okay, so you take this line, put them in the eye of your hook, hold on to it, and wrap it around the hook and the line 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. After the 10 time, get this line and put it back to the hook again like so okay and pull it tight and that's it now on the next hook the next hook here what you want to do is aim for it so it's about an inch apart and on top like that okay so we'll take this line once again we put it back into this eye of the hook And it doesn't have to be really exact size, believe me. Roughly an inch, a thumb, or whatever it is, right about here. And then wrap it around the hook three times, uh, ten times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Put it back into the eye of the hook once again. Go. Pull it up straight. Pull it tight and you're good to go. Okay, now the fun part is I get to choose any one of these colors to match it with my spinning glow. So I'm gonna, for this purpose, this exercise, I'm gonna pick three of these little green beads here. And really, any kind of configuration you wanna do. Uh, you can do all three of them right there or you can do two like uh, DK does he does two right here and then he puts in a spinning glow
Then she puts in another green bead on top. Now you have the Coke Stinger. That's it. Cut out your tagline. That's it. Okay, as I mentioned to you, you can put the beads this way, or you can put all three beads in the middle, put one in the middle, two on top, two in the middle, one on top, whatever you like. That's part of the addictive thing about coconut fishing. You can make it any pattern you want, and they, they pretty much all work. And in the end, in the very end here, you can simply tie with an overhand knot if you want. If you don't want to do anything fancy, you can just simply tie it with a double overhand knot like that. Like that. And you're ready to go. That's it. Cut out your tag in. Cut out your tag in here. And you can leave this if you want, but you can cut them out here. And there you have it. JU's Coke Stinger, folks. This one measures 10 inches. The entire length is one foot long. And that'll do it. Put it with a tornado flasher, which we'll be talking about in another episode. Okay family, so now I'm going to show you an experimental rig. I found this in my tackle box and it looked like an amazing invention, invention that I you know, didn't have not utilized. So I'm going to try it out for coconut fishing. So in this new rig I'm putting together is going to require three beads, some hooks, a clevis and a poly size one spinner. I I think for coconut salmon, I think you should use up to about size three. You know, either zero, one, two, or three. I think this is a one. So once again, tying the two knots that uh, I just showed you. Tying the hooks together. I've already pre-cut this 10 pound test line to 18 inches, foot and a half. And like I said, experiment. I'm gonna put one of these beads right in the middle of the two hooks. Here you go. Then I'm gonna tie the other hook, wrap it. Keep it opposite. You can keep it the same size if you want. It's up to your preference. I like to keep it opposite. Wrap it 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bring it back through. Tighten it up. All right. I'm going to put another orange bead in. What's amazing about this little fish, I didn't realize it has a hole right through it. So I'm going to take one out. Kind of incredible invention here, guys. There's a hole right through the fish. So all I gotta do is put this line right through the fish. I wanna keep the heads up. This fish came with a hole already from the bottom to the top. Just push it through, thread it through. Look at that, look at that. Isn't that cool or what? <laughs> it's pretty cool to me, just discovered it. So I'm going to put it like that, then I'm going to do another another bead through here. Okay, now I got a bead on top of it. Then I'm going to put my clevis together with my spinner. Clevis and spinner in together, get a line through it. Now this is experimental family, I've never, I've not used this yet, so I don't know if it's going to work or not, but you know as a fisherman, Looks pretty cool. Here's how's this. So this is gonna spin around and hopefully give me a coconut. <laughs> no name, never been used, never used it. So this is my new rig, experimental rig. I'm gonna show you a bunch more of my experimental rigs that have not seen water yet. 
Uh, but I'm not going to show you how to make it, but pretty much the idea is the same. Just let your imagination run wild. All right, family, I hope that was enjoyable for you. I show you how to make a try and true coconut fishing lure that you use coke stinger. And I show you one of my experimental ones. And now I'm going to show you a bunch of one that I've already made up. Some are try, well, I'm, I'm only going to show you the experimental one because the try and true, you've pretty much seen them in my videos. I've been pretty much using the coke stinger. Uh, like I said, the ones that also work are the Mac lures, the hot ticket lures, the micro shrimp. I'm only going to show you what I'm doing. And so I'm going to now show you some of my experimental lures that I put up together. Haven't seen the water yet. So hopefully I can show you in the future how they do. Okay, here are some of my experimental coconut fishing lures. That you haven't seen me use them yet. I'm not sure if anybody uses something similar to this. But I will tell you in the future how they do. So come back and join me for the next episode where we'll talk about the flashers. Once again, family and friend, as always, there are lots of good fishing videos out there. I do appreciate each and every time you guys come to check out my channel. Until the next time, peace out, family. Woo! Bam!